Okay, Cam 30s, here we go. Uh, we're going to get into 16.2 here in a second. One thing I want to uh, talk about, I realized I uh, missed this in the uh, last set of videos, is at the end of 16.1 there is a section on acid strength and equilibrium position, talking about strong and weak acids, which we did and looked at briefly in Chemistry 20. We're going to leave it there. We don't have to get into that so much, so you can get rid of this section on strong and weak acids, and also percent ionization, which is really just a percentage yield calculation. We would use this to figure out how far a weak acid goes through equilibrium uh, to produce hydronium ions. Um, if we'd had more time for the unit and we were doing this in class, we would obviously do this and we would tie it into helping us use uh, K values for our ice tables to see and confirm whether or not a K value is valid or not. We're going to ignore this as well since we've already covered off that concept with percent yield. Rho or percent reaction or percent ionization is essentially the same thing. We're just using the terminology for an acid reacting with water. All right, so you can certainly read it. It'll come up in university, but uh, We've already covered this concept, so it's a good thing to drop in chapter 16. So what we want to do now is talk about the Bronsted-Lowry acid-base concept. We last talked about acids bases as uh, the modified Arrhenius definition, which was really just looking at acids were substances that reacted with water to produce hydronium, and bases were substances that either reacted with water or dissociated directly to produce hydroxide. All right, and so we see that here as the modified Arrhenius. Problem is, modified Arrhenius can't explain everything that is acid or base. It does a pretty good job and explains most, but uh, it certainly isn't all-inclusive. We can see that it doesn't in uh, involve every reaction um, that we can look at because there are acids and bases involving reactions that don't include water. Uh, it can't explain things that are known as amphiprotic or amphoteric, which is species that can act as an acid or a base, such as the bicarbonate ion, HCO3-. All right, that guy right there, uh, that exists in your bloodstream and keeps your blood at a nice pH so that, well, you don't die when you have a cup of coffee or a glass of milk. Uh, the Bronsted-Lowry concept gives us way more accuracy and is able to explain many, many more acids and bases and is very closely related to something we've already done with electrochemistry. If we said electrochemistry was really just talking about the electron transfer theory, and following those electrons, well then acids and bases dealing with that weird hydrogen could be looked at from a different point of view. And from that, or for that, we're going to take a very analogous idea and we're going to look at acids and bases, the Bronsted-Lowry concept, based upon the idea of proton transfer. Now what is a proton? Well, remember, in acid-base chemistry, a proton, when we first looked at it, was really just a hydrogen ion. We want to follow H plus as it moves through a chemical reaction and causes either the creation of hydronium or the creation of hydroxide. In other words, the proton transfer theory is really just a way of looking at how acids and bases as molecules and chemical compounds kind of mess with water's equilibrium and tip the scales from its previously balanced hydronium and hydroxide ions in solution. So, simple, simple definition. Um, just read this a couple of times and memorize it. In Bronsted-Lowry concept, a Bronsted-Lowry acid is any molecule or ion that can transfer a proton to another substance. I like to use the words proton donor. So you can see on the reactant side that you had a substance that has an extra hydrogen or has a hydrogen. And then on the product side, you see that there's just the remaining anion or remaining elements of the species from that original molecule or compound. So you'd be able to track that something has lost an H plus and given it to something else. 
This is a reciprocal idea because then a bronsted lowry base is anything that accepted that proton. Okay, so bases are proton acceptors, acids are proton donors. The video link that you can kind of see here is found on D2L. It is a very nice, short, about three minute or four minute video um, from Ted Ed, and it does a really nice idea relating back to what acids and bases are, this idea of proton transfer, and examples of what proton donors and proton acceptors are. It also relates it nicely to electrochemistry. So I would encourage you to go into D2L and take a look at the acid base videos and find the one on uh, TED Ed looking at proton transfer theory. Once you've watched that video, come back to here and take a look at it. In proton transfer reaction, with the exception of strong acids, there will be a forward and reverse reaction that involves your bronsted lowry acids and bases. So take a look at the vinegar reaction. I'm going to take a little bit of acetic acid, I'm going to dump it into some water, and I'm going to make a low pH or acidic vinegar or acetic acid solution. This is covered again in the text on page 724, so I would encourage you to look at it there. And here we have the reaction. You can see I've taken an acetic acid solution and I've added it to some water. It exists in equilibrium because acetic acid is a weak acid, which means, by definition, that it does not ionize completely with water. So it dissolves, but only some of it reacts with water to produce the hydronium that would give us a low pH. And so we can see the products here. Look for the hydrogen movement. You can see that you have that extra hydrogen on your acetic acid molecule, but if you look at the products, it's missing. Where did it go? Look at the other molecule. I had H2O with water, but in the product side it's H3O+. plus. It has picked up this extra hydrogen. So there it is. This means that the hydrogen has been donated to water. Water was the acceptor. So, according to our Bronsted-Lowry definitions, any acid is a proton donor. Therefore, acetic acid molecule, which gave it up when you look at the reaction, is your acid. Water, because it accepted it to make hydronium, is your base. But that's only for the forward reaction. Remember, weak acids and bases are things that don't react completely, so there must be an equilibrium. Let's take a look at the reverse reaction. There should be, according to Bronsted-Lowry, a conjugate acid and base, or other acids and bases on the product side that we can identify for a reverse reaction. So take a look at it this way. If I start with hydronium, you can see I have H3O. On the other side, it's lacking one. It's, uh, acetate ion, which is a negative, has picked up a positive H+, and so in the reverse reaction you can see that it is the hydronium that is your acid, and it is the acetate ion that is your base, and there's your proton transfer again for the reverse. So we can find an acid and a base on both sides of the reaction, and where the equal equilibrium will lie is, simply put, which of these two acids is the more aggressive proton donor? Which one has a better ability of giving it up and forcing that particular reaction? All right, very similar to what we did with OAs and RAs in electrochemistry, we're now gonna look at this as a strength of acid idea. All right, so we have a few examples here. What we're gonna do is just see if we can identify the acid and the base in each reaction. I will include the solutions to these ones here in the next video.